Now, the mayor of Bristol has spoken about growing up in Easton and how his experiences influenced his politics and his drive to succeed. 17 months into the job, Marvin Rees has been telling Alex Beresford about the challenges he's faced and what it felt like to lose the election the first time round. To you or I, he's the city's mayor. But Marvin Rees grew up in a very different Bristol to the one we know today. Well, I, I have a strange nostalgia for my childhood. I mean, it was challenging, yeah. I mean, I remember 50 P's dropping in the electric meter and that's it, right? I didn't have another 50 P. So then lights out at seven, go to bed or sit by the light of the, the gas fire. But life was tough, you know, I, I sometimes didn't have enough food. But at the same time, I had a really loving family, you know. I got, I got seven brothers and sisters by my dad you know, and um, our mums were very uh, committed to making sure we knew each other, that our, the children shouldn't be caught up in any kind of family dynamics. So we grew up close um, and, and, you know, my mum and, you know, loved me. We had the fantastic grandparents. So th there were those challenges, but challenges that many people faced. He spent his school days in Shire Hampton, a place he would return to decades later to launch his mayoral campaign. School was a massive contradiction for me. So um, I, I, I think I combine a very deep sense of self-confidence with a very deep sense of insecurity. I was also struggling with my identity. My, my trousers in school, I, you know, we used to wear farahs at the time. Mm. And uh, when my farahs got too short, it just used to let the bottom down. So they were faded, yeah, yeah. they were faded black at the top <laughs> with this nice fresh black <laughs> right at the bottom. So you knew the poor kids, right? Because they had yeah. two-tone farahs on. Not to be defined by his difference, the South starter had ambition and liked being the winner nobody sees coming. Always had a passion which is about um, getting involved in decision making, trying to make the world a fairer place. Um, I'm always drawn to underdogs, maybe because, you know, I... You were an underdog. Many of us are underdogs, right? As an adult, he was attracted to the discipline of the forces, but it wasn't meant to be. My, my cousins had joined the army and one of them said to me about the Marines and I just fixated on becoming a Royal Marine officer. So I had the real blessing that um, I went down to Limpston, took the physical, passed that. I uh, went to Portsmouth, took the Admiralty Interview Board, passed that, which again was amazing. And the last test you do is the medical. And I've got an eye condition called keratoconus and, right. and they wouldn't take me on my eye condition. So I found out at 18 that this thing I've been looking at for the first last three or four years, I wasn't able to do. Used to bouncing back from rejection though, his thirst for knowledge led him to university and then eventually to the US, where he was selected for a prestigious fellowship course at an Ivy League institute aimed at nurturing future leaders. Once I didn't get into the Marines, I think it, it kicked in a period of lostness that probably lasted for, for 20 years. Yeah, I, so I, I used to tell my wife, I have marine dreams still, right? When I, when I find my, I dream I'm down at Limpston doing all yeah. that, because that was going to define me. So, so I, I've been looking for my space for 20 years. And that's why I say it feels like putting a glove on, because I feel like I found it now. Yeah. But the man who had succeeded in so much had to come to terms with loss the first time he ran for mayor in 2012. One is I felt shame, which is like people say... But that's natural though, isn't it? Yeah, well, I just felt shame of losing. So I lived in Army Square on Stableton Road and I remember going around the shop and I put my hoodie up and I put my head down, put my hoodie up and walked around to the shop. And, uh, you know, I didn't want people to see me because I was embarrassed, yeah. you know, I lost. And yet at the same time, right, we know the social mobility, I shouldn't have feel embarrassed. <laughs> um, but I embraced that. I, I gave a talk within about two weeks of losing that election to a group of kids who were being on the edge of gang life or in gang life. And I said to them, I stood in front of 400 and thousand people as a failure. And I entered into that. But what do you do next? That's the question. Picking himself up from defeat, when voter turnout more than doubled for last year's mayor battle, the path became clear for a leader who had perhaps always been in waiting. Um, it's a guts dropping moment in some ways. So I was in a, we were at the uh, count centre in Parkview up in the edge of Bristol. And um, I was in a, in a room, uh, my wife was there, I think my mum was there, the kids were in there, and then a few people from the Labour Party from my campaign team. And they come and they said, Marvin, first round, you've had 50 odd thousand votes and George has got 30 something, you know, 20 something. And they're like, 
this is it, Mark, you won. Yeah. You can't come back from that. And I sat there, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> this is going to happen, right? We've been campaigning for 10 months, 11 months, it's going to happen. I mean, think, stop cheering. Everyone calm down, you know. Yeah, give me everyone a moment. Everyone stop looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just suddenly start to, it's very, very surreal. It's, you, you, you walk around, you think, wow, I, I'm actually the mayor of Bristol now. Marvin Reesler speaking to Alex Beresford, where you can watch the full interview on Made in Bristol tomorrow at 10am and 8pm.